Let me show you the best way of doing freight in Transport Fever 2 hands down. Now this is what you're probably doing wrong in Transport Fever 2. While it is possible to connect freight directly to the destination, it's definitely not efficient. Now what if we did all of this with one really long freight train or a few shorter ones on the same track? You're going to want to follow this along and watch to the end to find out why this design will completely change the meta in Transport Fever 2. This map is a long 1 to 5 map but this works for every type of map in Transport Fever 2. For this setup, we're gonna do two types of stations. We're gonna have a sorting freight yard and we're gonna have a distribution center. It's super easy to do. For a long map, you only need three with your distribution center in the center and the two sorting yards on either side. But for a square map, all you should need is one distribution center in the middle and then surrounding in a circle, some freight sorting yards. So this is the center of the map. I've already started this off by placing a station down. This is going to be our distribution center and we've already got some trucks waiting for any incoming goods. But we've got to actually bring the goods over here. And most of the industries are in the extremities of the map. You can see there's lots of wood, there's some steel, all this sorts of thing on this side of the map. There's not a whole lot in the middle. And if there was anyway, it wouldn't matter. We'd still take it here. So wherever you are in your map, find the middlemost space. In this case, I've split it into thirds and I'm in the middle of this third. This can sometimes be a bit tricky, so basically a good rule of thumb is where all the industries are. The next thing on your checklist is, is there an existing train line there? For me, yes there is. There's this commuter service with the RA2s running into that city over there, and that joins on to the main line. Perfect. So what you definitely don't want to be doing is putting your freight sorting center next to your high-speed routes. This is a bullet train right here, so what we don't want is slow freight trains entering and leaving a goods yard off the main line. It'll slow down our fast trains. Not a good idea and you want to avoid that. Generally speaking, try and avoid putting freight trains on your high speed routes, but there is an exception to the rule, which I'm going to show off in just a sec. But for now, let's get our sorting center down. Here is a perfect spot for it. For a sorting yard, it's pretty simple. Grab yourself a freight station and you're going to give yourself about six platforms. You're going to make the length 240 or 320 meters up to you. I usually go for 240. It's just about that sort of right length for a sorting yard. Once you've got this sort of set up, all the tracks going into one like this, grab your tracks again and we're going to make a little loop on the end of here. As tight as you can possibly go with it, make sure it's flat. Then connect that together and now you've got to turn around. Then after this junction, grab the end of there, plug it straight into this track just here and then straight after that, plug that into there like that. Same on the other side. Make sure you've got lots of signals covering all these junctions from all angles. And the same goes on the platforms on both sides. You want to have signals on the exits, just like that. Now we've got our loops in. We're going to grab the tracks again and we're going to bring them out nice and straight, a little bit away from the junction, keeping it nice and flat. Then at about the halfway point on the circle, you're going to grab the track and you're going to bring this down into this new straight you just did. If it's not long enough, just make it a little bit longer. Just like that, as tight as possible. Same on the other side. And after you've got all that done, go ahead and delete the straight track after the junction there. So you're just left with the junction itself. And on the ends of these junctions here, we're gonna connect this up to this track next door. Just connect it straight into the outside lane, then get a crossover track. Pop your signals down as well for defense. And that's everything you need to know about the actual sorting facility design itself. This is pretty much the best design you can get in the game. And this allows you to do basically every kind of setup you'd like through, looping around, in and out, all sorts. Now everything's in place, we can start bringing the industries in. And it's super simple. There's a nice little stone quarry over here. Let's use this as a first example. So with absolutely no setup, we can go ahead straight away and grab a one tracker and we can plug that guy straight in. Obviously not the best setup ever because there's a lot of construction costs here. But uh, you know what, it works for this example. So that's plugged in nicely. That's then gonna come back down to the ground in a nice smooth fashion, hopefully. And let's bring this back up to about here and then we're gonna stop. This is then gonna loop around here. It's gonna plug straight up into this track here. And then guess what? Because we made this type of junction instead of the other type of junction, this junction can reuse this middle junction to get to the other side. How good's that? A quick signal on there as well. Now, I don't quite know how long the trains are going to be, so we're going to start off with one train and then we'll do our passing point after because we're probably going to need two trains for this. I do have a main depot we could use, but I'm going to just use a standard depot just placed here for now, just because it is actually just a lot easier to do it this way. We'll grab a train here. Now, train wise, what do we want? Well, you're going to want something pretty small. The TE3 maybe, the BRV100, the Alco HH600. A variety of steam trains could do the job as well. Alco PA or the AA16 at a push, or the GP9 or the DF5. These are the best trains to use. And in this circumstance, I'm going to go for a lovely little BRV100. First of all, before we go to cargo, the top speed is 90 kilometers an hour for this train. Let's go back to cargo. We want to find one that's approximately 90 kilometers an hour. That one's 80. That'll do pretty well. 
All right, so we'll grab a couple of these then. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. That works for me. We'll grab that and stroke that onto a new line. That's going to go from the pickup zone and it's going to go to the drop off center. It doesn't really matter which platforms you use here, but what does matter is that you're exiting in the correct fashion. So what I recommend is you go to a signal and you're going to add a signal over on this end over here. And then once you've got a signal, grab a waypoint this time, pop that on the other side. And then now in your route manager, you can add a station, add the waypoint first of all. And then if it doesn't automatically go here, add the signal. It's fine in my circumstance because it's added it. That's then going to go across there and that's going to just loop around and make things nice and visually easy on the eye. Also, when you're actually at the sorting facility, you're more than welcome to change the alternate terminals to select all of these. It comes in handy if a platform's full, you've not got trains waiting around. Now we can watch this train come out and see how long it is. Now this is important. Now nothing's actually going to get loaded until we set up the distribution center. So we're going to be burning through a lot of money on the setup, but it's well worth it, trust me. Another cool tip is on these trains, when you make the game or load the game, you can select all vehicle types and you can actually use the American, Asian and European all on the same train and they go the same speed. So you can do some really cool things. Watch this. There you are. There's now a bit of variety in the actual type of cargo wagon. It's a bit more visually interesting. I definitely would not recommend using huge long trains for these routes. You definitely want to be using these smaller trains that feed into one bigger system. But let's just pause the game here. We can see how long this train is. And now we've got the length of the train. We can add our passing loop. And it's really easy to do. Literally just build a track at the same length of the train. And then just connect it on either side up to the track. Just like that. Ram a signal there and over here as well. And then in the route, it should automatically change. But if it doesn't, you can also add a signal in the route on the way here. Just like that. And with that, we can manage vehicle and clone. So stone's done now. That's that one out of the way. Now let me show you how you convert a pre-existing line. Very easy to do. This wood route brings logs down the hill over to this sawmill. It's a very simple line. Let's add this to the new infrastructure. Get rid of this road. Get rid of this station. In fact, we can get rid of a lot of this stuff, to be honest. Make it one track, of course. You can leave it double if you want, but it's a bit of a waste of money. Just simply plug this in and add a signal, of course. At the end of the junction, plug into the other side. We also need a passing point. Let's find the line. We're going to get rid of the old station. Add a station instead over here. We'll grab all the alternate platforms as well. And then the same thing, we're turning around. So we're going back out that way. If you've got the exact setup as me, you want these shunting vehicles to be no longer than about 115 meters. So it is a good length. So with that said, this guy's got to change because he's 272 meters, way too long. There's already a GP9 on it. Good choice of vehicle. So we don't need to change that. We'll just knock a few of these guys off. And then to take those logs back to its original place, this lumber company, we're going to add a road because literally it's right next door. No point doing train here. There's a very good reason for this. We'll grab some vehicles for the route as well. Make sure these are log vehicles because they can store more. We'll go for a nice five of these just to start off. We'll dump them onto the line. Another great thing is this yard acts as a turnaround point for your commuter trains if they get lost, which to be fair, they sometimes do. I'm not quite sure why, but it happens. So this guy is turning around and getting back onto the main line. All right, this is looking pretty good. Let's connect all of the industries nearby to the sorting hub. Then we can get onto the distribution center. Everything is now connected up to the sorting yard, but we're not getting any products coming into the sorting yard. And that's because they've got nowhere to go. They need a destination. And for that reason, we're going to take all these products down to the center of the map, the capital. We can reuse this whole commuter route all the way down here. It's all set up and ready to go. All we need to do is to add some trains to the route and sort out the station at the end. We're not going to have a crazy amount of traffic, so I'm just going to simply add one extra track on here. And on the end, simply do an X crossover with alternate platforms. So these are the resources we have available on our network now. We've got refined wood from the logs that are coming and then getting turned into refined here and then coming back. We've got steel coming in and we've got stone coming in. So now we know what we can take with us, what's available from this good sourcing yard. Now we've plugged all the stuff in the surrounding area in. We can actually make a train that's going to transport this stuff over from the sorting yard over to the distribution hub, which is going to be over in capital, which is the center of the map. I've already got a little station here just for the drop off with some trucks ready to go with the goods. These guys carry every good in the game, which is fantastic. So let's grab ourselves a train. I believe we can go for an electric train. This part of the truck is electrified. So let's grab ourselves a train. We're going to go for a, a decently fast one. We've got to bear in mind it is a slow track with lots of commuter trains, but it's going to be decently fast as well to get the goods there on time. And we're going to take every single good at the same time to the destination we want to go to. Let's do this. So let's open this menu up, pin that. 
So we're going to want a fast train. Let's go to diesel. So we've got 160, 160, 120. I think we'll go for the 160. So let's go for a series 246. That looks good to me. In fact, we'll go for two of these and one can be at the end as well. Cargo. Well, we're carrying fuel first of all. So let's grab some fuel cars that go 160. Let's go just to start off with, with one, two, three of those. Uh, we're also carrying some steel. So we're going to go with these guys. One, two, three again. We're carrying stone as well. So one, two, three of these guys. And we're also carrying refined wood. So one, two, three of these on the end as well. And then we'll stick that train right at the end so it's nice and consist. We'll purchase that. And then we're going to need a new route. That's going to go from platform one. Then that's going to go all the way over here from the sorting yard. All the way over here through Pretoria. And it's going to end up right there in Pretoria South, which is our drop off point. We'll stick an alternate platform on there as well if we need it. You never know. And now that's enough, we'll give it a quick name. North Sorting Yard to Distribution Hub. Pretty good stuff. And now with that said, we're going to have to get some trucks that are going to carry the stuff. So we've got our station here already. And we're going to need one drop off in Pretoria because Pretoria wants fuel. So let's see whereabouts they want fuel. Over here in this corner. So we can make a little drop off just there. I'm not going to mess around with loops and stuff. Although it does look cool. You should add those definitely. We're also going to need to go over here to Pretoria Machines Factory. That's going to go just out front. Nothing fancy once again. Just bare bones just so I could show it off. And I'll connect this up as well. That's that one done. And of course, the same thing over at this tools factory and the same thing over at this bricks factory. And those guys are all hooked up and ready to go. Let's get some vehicles on there. Sorry, boss. <laughs> Is that the army's rolling in, eh? Here comes the train. So build yourself a sorting yard on both sides of the map and bring everything in to the center. It's going to take a good minute for everything to kick in. Looks like wood's the only thing we've got in good supply because it's right next door. So things can come in quickly. But there's stuff like stone over here, only a little bit's been made so far because the resources just started being used. So there's not a whole lot that's being transported because it's literally just started being transported and the trains have got to get there. So that's why we've got loads of wood, but this train should fill up pretty quickly. And if this train's getting really busy, you can always add another one to the network. That's the beauty of having everything in one place and neatly organized. You can just add another thing. No tracks building, no jobs needed to be done all automated. So these trains are what you would class as low tier or shunting trains. And this is what's classed as an intermediate cargo or a medium train. So if that's the case, what are we classing as a heavy train? Because this is pretty heavy, but it's nothing in comparison to the absolute mammoth that a heavy train is. While our medium cargo is stuck in traffic, of course it is, it's a commuter line. Let's take a look at what a heavy train is. A heavy train is a train that's like three times the length of this train that's gonna carry every single cooked resource to every single city, every city that needs it. So it's gonna have six cargo types on one massive train that's gonna trail the map, dropping stuff off. And just like real life, this means that cities closer to the capital are more likely to be wealthy. In fact, if you're very clever about it, you can even reuse your medium cargo trains to deliver some of the cooked goods. One thing's for sure though, what you shouldn't do is have this medium cargo train stopping at stations before the capital. You start at the capital first and deliver and then work your way out. This is the northern sorting yard. I'm going to make another one of these in the south. And then with both of these joining it in the middle, we should be able to make these heavy trains that I'm talking about. And this train marks the last train to go on the route to bring every resource to the sorting hubs. So south yard to distribution, off those trains go. And now we should start to see some production that's going to start over on these places as they have a place to go. Now once this train makes its way over to the sorting yard and picking stuff up and then dropping it off at distribution, the whole map is then going to share resources. Every single resource on the map will be in one place at the same time. And it's so OP because it means trains are going backwards and forwards with a full load. It just means so much profit rolls in. Nearly every train is rolling in with a full load both ways. For example, this train's picking up this fuel here, it's going to take it to the hub over here. Once at the hub, a train's going to pick it up and it's going to take it over to the distribution hub. Once at the distribution hub, another train's going to pick it up and take it over to this sorting hub over this side of the map. It's going to drop it off and then the gasoline drop-off train is going to pick up the crude gas, take it back over to the gasoline refinery and then it's full both ways. That's just one example. And then when the gas is cooked, it goes back to the sorting hub. The transport train is going to then pick it up. It's going to take it back to the distribution hub. Then it's going to be delivered to the towns and cities via our fuel trucks. It's just so OP. But now you understand how you make the best cargo system possible, you're going to need some passenger stations to go with it. And that's why you should watch this video to get the best passenger station in Transport Fever 2. Hands down, check it out.